Hello AP Calculus AB students. We're going to take a look at example two from our topic 2.9, dealing with once again the quotient rule. If you joined us in the first video, we ran through the solution of example one, which is a pretty straightforward application. And we're going to now follow up with this wonderful example two, which has just got a few extra components to it. So what we're doing is we're going to find the equation of the tangent line to y equal e to the x over 1 plus x squared, and we're going to do so at this ordered pair 1 comma e over 2. And for the first part of the problem, you're going to really temporarily forget that there's an ordered pair here. We're not focused on that so much. We are focused instead on making sure that we take this derivative y prime correctly. So if you remember from the previous lesson, the quotient rule says to start your derivative off by taking the derivative of the numerator, which very interestingly is going to be the same thing that you were left, you started with, e to the x. And then you'll multiply that by 1 plus x squared. So we've got the derivative of the top times the bottom. And then you're going to subtract the top. And then you'll multiply by the derivative of the bottom, which would be 0 plus 2x which we could just say 2x for that. And then of course, the other thing that the quotient rule has going on is that we take that denominator and we square it all. And that would be an acceptable first derivative. At this point, if problems like this typically have about a three point value in my class, that would be your first point. Now the next point is going to be awarded for finding the very specific slope. And what you can do here, if you want, is you could just go ahead and plug that value of x in 1 right now. In other words, you don't have to distribute e to the x and simplify the numerator. Now you can, but I don't think that that really makes finding the value at 1 much easier because you guys are probably going to have a much easier chance of simplifying this now that everything is written in terms of numbers. So we have e to the first times 1 plus 1 squared. We know that 1 squared is 1, so I'll do away with writing that squared. And then another e to the first. And then 2 times 1, of course, is 2. And then the denominator of this guy is going to be 1 plus 1 squared, which is going to be 2. And then that's going to be squared. And I'm sure you just heard our bell ring. y prime of 1, then, is going to be... Well, what do we have here? 2 times e, so that's pretty much simplified, minus, hey, that's another 2 times e. Well, I don't know if it really matters much what we have in the denominator. Just for kicks, it's 4, right? 1 plus 1 squared is going to be 2 squared, or 4. And so the answer to this is going to be 0 over 4, or just 0. So what this means is that we can write the equation of our line by using the point slope formula, which goes y minus e over 2. And that's equivalent to our slope 0 quantity x minus our x value. And while this form is perfectly acceptable, um, it can be altered and cleaned up pretty easily by just multiplying 0 through on the right side. And then if we added the e over 2 to the right, we could say that the, the equation of the line looks like that. Either one would be perfectly fine. What do you say we take a look at this from a graphical standpoint? So here you are with our graphing calculator. I'm on a graphing page. Doesn't matter if you're Scratchpad or Document here, if you're using an Inspire. But if we enter that function, which I believe was e to the x over 1 plus, I forgot what it was, you guys, x squared. See, my, my fourth period class was there to save me. 1 plus x squared. So here's what the equation would graph. And what do we notice about this graph? Well, we're really concerned. We're really interested in what's happening at the point where x is 1. And right about here, we notice that we have this very special tangent line that should have a slope of 0. And I think it's what's happening. Um, and in fact, if I do a little alteration to this particular graph. Um, it needs to be in a document setting instead of a scratch pad, but I can just easily alter that. I'm going to hit control save and just choose to save the graph to a new document. Now I know it's a document because it says 
doc up there and this allows me to do a few other cool things like i can go into menu and this geometry feature is now available it wouldn't have been in a scratch pad and i can choose point and line let's try that again menu geometry points and lines and i'm really excited about this one guys tangent line option eight and if i choose this graph and the right location which is right about oh man can i get it to be exact i'm not going to get it to be exact i'm not even going to try because the inspire is wants to show off here but that would be the equation of this tangent line now you look at this thing you have to understand that this 2.37 e to the negative 6x is probably something that's going to be really small close to zero can you picture this decimal moving six places to the left so i'm just going to get rid of you bye and just kind of maybe expand on this line a little bit and boom that's the line that's the tangent line what's cool about these tangent lines is i can move them i can kind of show you how it meanders through the graph but again, I'm only concerned with what's happening right there when x is 1. And I have this tangent line that probably has the equation y equal e divided by 2. Ooh, think about that. What is e divided by 2? Well, e is about 2.7. Divide that by 2. Aren't you going to have a y value a little bit bigger than 1? So it kind of makes sense that we would lie a little bit bigger than 1 for our y value. Anyway, I hope this helps, and we'll see you at the next video.